What's going on y'all? Ray here with Second Chance Rising where it's not just about the music but the ministry as well. well I've got a question for you today. Are you having a hard time getting start, started with your morning devotional or the time that you spend with God each day? Well, if you do, i got five tips that help me tremendously, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, so tip one is probably the hardest, but it's the most obvious, and that's just to get started. You know, to, to allow some time to spend with God each day. Now, I would recommend not putting yourself with any pressure on yourself of, I'm going to spend an hour, or I'm going to get this far in this chapter of the Bible, or I'm going to do this or that. You know, I would just label it, hey, it may start out of just spending five minutes in prayer. You know, praying for those people that you need, praying for yourself. Uh, thanking the Lord for the blessings. Maybe it's, uh, I've got a calendar that has a verse on it each day. Maybe it's just reading one verse to get your day started. You know, the Holy Spirit will lead you and you'll begin to want to spend more time with Him just naturally. At least that's what happened with, with me. Um, you know, sometimes maybe a devotional book or it's a page or two. Maybe that's just the right amount for you. Don't put any pressure on yourself to spend any length of particular length of time or to accomplish a certain amount but just, um, just make sure you spend a little bit of time with the Lord each day. You know, the Lord will start leading you. Maybe you want to start studying your whole your, your Sunday school lesson, which might take an hour or two. Uh, maybe that one verse that you read, you'll want to open up your Bible and dig in and read that whole chapter. So uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you in that. So that's step one is just getting started. It's the most obviously, but sometimes it's the hardest. So that leads us to tip number two. Now, personally, I do mine in the morning. My time that I spend with the Lord, I like to do it in the morning. I'm an early riser. I get ready for work. I make myself a cup of coffee. I begin my devotional before I get any distractions. I can get sidetracked so quick if I don't stick on that routine. Um, if I say I'm going to wait till later on in the day to do it, that time seems to never come. If I say, oh, let me just check a few emails, let me go... Um, take the trash out, even just something simple like that in the mornings. The next thing I know that I've, I've skipped it. So I think the routine is one of the most important parts. You know, the days that I struggle with doing my morning devotional, uh, probably the most is Saturday uh, when I don't go to work because my routine's different. And even though that I'm up and I'm early, uh, I still tend to maybe start making some music or recording music, maybe doing some mixing, maybe uh, doing some honeydews or lists. Maybe we're going out of town. You know, which, you know, that leads to another subject. So when I go out of town for work, uh, sometimes I put my devotional, my Bible in my, in my backpack or my suitcase. But sometimes just because that routine's different, I don't always do that devotional. That's a weak spot for me that I'm trying to conquer myself. That even when I'm out of town, uh, that that routine, that morning routine is still the same. So I can't recommend routine enough. I think it's one of the most important things for me because if I don't do it that same time or that designated time, I get sidetracked and I go down a different route. So I hope that tip number two helps you. You know, tip number three, I never would have thought would have made that big of a difference, but to me, it's important as well. Turns out all these tips are important, but it's the place. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a Studio 825 in my backyard so I can get out of the house. It's quiet. I'm here by myself. I remember watching, I think, the movie The War Room with the lady, the character in the movie, I think had a closet that she went into and prayed. Uh, called it a war room. I always thought that was kind of neat. So I try to do it at the same place. I have my Bibles to my side. Uh, I always have a notebook and a pen here if I want to take notes. If I get inspired to something in my devotional that I want to share on a Wednesday's Word, um, I can do, I'll, I'll be able to take some notes to be able to do that and refer back to that later. If you haven't seen any of the Wednesday's Word yet and you've just found this first video, uh, I'll, I'll make a link to it at the end of this video so you can check those out as well. But I think the place and being prepared to do the devotional, I think, is just as important. If you have to start hunting for that devotional book, if you have to start hunting for your Bible, do I leave it in the car from church, what have you? I'm speaking to myself. I get distracted and I get sidetracked. And the next thing you know, I haven't spent my, my morning time with God. And speaking of resources, that leads us into tip number four. So tip number four, exactly, it's resources. You know, so I have my Bible here. Um, I use an NIV 
uh, Bible, typically for my everyday Bible at church. I also have an NLT Spurgeon uh, study Bible. I also have a keyword Bible. Um, I have a, several different devotional books. I do it a little bit different than maybe some people do. I don't start one devotional book and read all the way through to the end of it uh, on my daily devotions. Um, I'll pick one one day and another one another day. And you'll be surprised at the times that I've went from one devotional book to the other. And whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm praying about, whatever I'm struggling with, that devotional in the new book that I decide to pick up that day, the Holy Spirit and the Lord is speaking to me there. So I don't just stick with one, which may be a little bit odd or, or different than most people. Um, I've also got a book that's kind of a, kind of a joke book that one of my, my, my youngest daughter gave me. I think it's got about 90 devotionals. I'm only in it on up to about 30. But if I need cheering up and I know that I don't have a lot of time, and quite honestly, I'm just not feeling like spending 15, 30 minutes or an hour uh, with God that morning, it does happen. I'm being honest with you. I'm being real with you. I'll pop that open that tells that little story, that little funny that leads into a verse. And, and sometimes that's just enough for me. And I'll go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe that's enough to get me started and feeling better. And I'll, I'll grab one of the other books and I want more. Um, so I've got several different resources. Um, don't let me fool you. Uh, I, don't, I don't open up that Bible. Then I open up my study Bible. Then I go to the keyword Bible. I'm not always digging into... Uh, my daily time with the Lord, uh, using all those resources. Um, matter of fact, that may be kind of rare. Maybe once every couple of weeks, I'm really spending, you know, over an hour and really digging in. Maybe I'm preparing for a Wednesday's Word, even though they're short. I still try to try to be as accurate as I can and as and as lining up with God's Word as much as I can. Um, so. Have you some resources, you know, and maybe you don't start out that way. Maybe just start off with one book to get started, like I said. Um, but uh, have you some things. Have you a notepad. You may want to write those down and share and share that later with someone else, which brings us to tip number five. So tip number five is to share, to share what you're studying, share what's, uh, what you read that morning or that afternoon or the day before or a couple days before, if you've skipped a couple days, don't beat yourself up. Um, you know, I like to share some stuff with my wife. You know, sometimes I'll share stuff with a friend or a coworker. Hey, you're not going to believe this, man. I was I was struggling with this, and all of a sudden I changed um, changed devotional books, and 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 here here's what I was struggling with is right here in front of me. You know, sometimes people just kind of roll their eyes at me, and they just kind of think, oh, that's just a coincidence. You know, a few uh, a few months ago, I remember um, uh, our preacher was preaching on uh, in Timothy chapter three about all Scripture being uh, true, and I think I did a Wednesday's word on that several weeks ago. And uh, sure enough, you would you wouldn't believe this, but I get home and I and I open my devotional book up, and it's on Second Timothy chapter three. I was sharing that with the band when we were at practice on Sunday afternoon after church here in the studio, and uh, we were talking about it, and we were sharing about that verse, and I was sharing about that verse, and the next morning I get a text uh, from my bass player, and he says, you're not going to believe what verse was my, in my next devotional uh, from my Bible study this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's just crazy how the Lord works sometimes in your life. So, you know, not only uh, it's, it's great to share that, but uh, when you, you get to discuss that with other people and other Christians, and hopefully you get to share that with someone that may not be a Christian, you know, the Lord does tell us to share His gospel. And this fills our heart and fills us with knowledge. And that's so important. I think, uh, I think it's very important to share and discuss what we're learning uh, in the Bible uh, so we can further our growth and mature in Christ, like it says in Hebrews. You know, I got a bonus tip, tip number six, and I don't always do this, and I don't know why I don't always do this, but I'm trying to get better myself, but that's pray before you start your devotional and pray on what you just learned. So many times I just get right into my devotional. I'm quick, too quick, but I want to uh, begin myself is to pray for understanding of what I'm reading, pray for the knowledge that it will soak into my into my heart. You know, the the more that your heart soaks up this goodness from God's Word, the less evil can get into that heart in your mind. So I want to make sure that I begin myself, and this tip number six is to pray before I begin. And then when I get finished, pray that I can retain it. Pray that those opportunities come that I can share it 
and, and, and just pray that it will work and manifest in my life. You know, I hope these six tips helps you become more faithful and grow in Christ. God bless you. Keep looking up, and we'll see you next time. I hope you have a great week.